we have mr aditya maheshwaran consultant hey group to energize all mr aditya holds mba from indian school of business and he is a consultant by profession and public speaker by passion he is affiliated to toastmasters international and has emerged as world number 2 at 2015 world championship of public speaking held at las vegas he received the young achiever award for 2011 by the rotary for exemplary achievements in leadership and social work aditya is also tedx speaker now let's have him on stage please aditya hello hi good afternoon everybody how was lunch gulab jamun everybody one more round There's still few people out there doing that for you, so you can be here. It's wonderful to see all of you today, and the first feeling that you have after lunch is you want to retire. So we are going to start by retiring. Suppose today is the last day of your career. You've had a long and successful career. Today is the last day, last working day of your life, and you have been given an opportunity to deliver. a one minute thank you speech last day of your life one minute thank you speech close your eyes and think of that one person in your career you would like to thank in your thank you speech and why you would like to thank that person in your thank you speech take 30 seconds close your eyes that one person you'd like to thank and why Can we have a hand mic? All right. Uh, close your eyes after lunch is a very tricky statement to say. <laughs> This is for you to think about that one person. Now, I would like two, three volunteers to actually tell us who you'd like to thank and why. You can pass on the mic. Anybody? Yeah. We we have our first volunteer there. Just less than a minute. <coughs> my, my name is Ramnathan. Uh, I would like to thank my family because uh, all the while we tend to move from places uh, due to the job and other things. They unless they support us, we would not have been in a position where we are so successful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. I would like all of you to think of your careers. You have worked with so many project managers, so many leaders in your life, so many bosses. Think of that one leader, manager, or boss that you have worked with. <coughs> you would like to thank on the last day of your work, and why you would like to thank? Them. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to thank uh, my boss in my pharmaceutical uh, industry okay. that I was in. Okay. So she taught me how to really move with people and how to care for them. So that really taught me a lot, and I am trying to, you know, like. To be in the same position as her, and that's something amazing. Okay, she taught you how. That's again people, people how to care for people exactly. and how to move with people, how to make them feel wanted. Great. Yeah. Who else? Yes. I would like to thank my first boss, Mr. Right. Sapre, who taught me engineering, basically how to do uh, right from a tender document to doing detailed engineering in a very <coughs> rough way, I should say. But that, that's what is sticking. Secondly, taught me values. Taught me values of being very honest, on time, and being very straight in whatever we do. How to deal with contractors? I think that has stood, and, and that's what something all of us who work with him carry with us. Right. And it still remains with you even after all these years. I, I still meet him. You know, you I still meet to... him, and it still remains with you, and remains etched. Who else? Who else wants you to retire? Yes, all of you are so eager to retire. I don't want to retire, retire now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> assuming this, yeah. I don't want to retire now. But assuming this is my last day in my career, yeah. uh, I'm not sure how many people will be fortunate to attend this session with the boss. The boss is sitting next to me. Okay. He's been an inspiring person. Okay. Uh, the most uh, <coughs> admiring quality that I see in him is uh, <laughs> <laughs> the most admiring quality that I see in him is uh, the care that he extends to each and every person in. Okay. the team not only the next levels level 2 even to the you know uh, 
engineers who are on the floor, the level of uh, care that he extends is extremely good. And uh, networking, moving with people. So the care and networking. Assuming he's not here? I would say the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Care and network. Who else? Who else wants to talk? I get yes. the mic already actually. Yes. <laughs> I think I, I want to thank a person who really tortured me. Okay. Honestly. Yeah. Had he not done that to me, probably I would not have changed my company, I would have continued there, <laughs> working like a working engineer, rubbing, painting, these kind of things. Okay. Thanks to him. How you should not treat a person. Right. I really learned from him. <laughs> when, when my friends are with me, my colleagues are with me, when you behave this way, how they react. Right. I reacted myself. I don't want that to happen to anybody else. That's the greatest lesson. Unless he taught me that way, no? that, that's the behavior. Mm. I would not have changed in my lifestyle, probably. That's thank a you. Point. Who else wants to retire? Yes? I would like to thank my mm. current boss, mm. who is an he, Italian. Is he here as well? No, she is not here. Okay. And, uh, so you mean you actually, really like I, to thank her? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would like to thank her because I'm a huge, huge Sachin Ilka fan. And she had arranged for me to meet him when he was in Chennai. And I don't think anybody can like, you know, bring back that moment, like the first thing, feeling of meeting, like, you know, somebody I've adored all my life. So she made it possible for me and I think like, you know, that is one thing I'll never, never forget. Okay. Wonderful. I would like to thank... Last couple of people? Yeah. Oh, right. that? All right. Yeah. I would like to thank my CEO, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Ramakrishnamurti Vingras Boots, uh, short name is RKM. Uh, so, about 10 years back, uh, when I joined uh, the current company, he said that uh, I want to have a long-term relationship with you. So, from a project leader to a project manager to a senior project manager, now I'm a project director. So, I work for three more than the company. Okay. Right. So, you help in assisting your career growth. Yeah. Last person. Last probably two people. Yes. Whoever has the mic can get up and start talking. And one mandatory rule is your boss should not be here. <laughs> I would like to thank uh, Mr. Venkat Krishnan Ram Swami. He was a uh, full manager for me. Okay. But one thing he thought uh, in terms of uh, organization structure, okay. you have politics and crap happening at the right. top. Right. To enable you to make the team perform at the best, as a manager, you should isolate all the crap. Right. And he thought the very basics of ethics and how you should defend for the team right. and make the team to perform the best taking the heat and productivity. Lovely. Value, ethics, how do you absorb that pressure and ensure your team is productive irrespective of what the organization throws at you. That's a lovely takeaway. One last thank you speech. Uh, whoever has the mic, I don't need to make a choice. So if he has more power than me now. <laughs> yes. Uh, my friendly and Yeah, this is to my uh, friendly project manager, delivery manager. His name is Rajesh Krishnamurti. Uh, not here, not even in the earth. Uh, very early from the face of life, he passed away. Uh, hope he is in the heaven. Uh, he is very friendly, very open, warm, um, able to equate with people emotionally and otherwise. Um, warm relationships, but still assertive. Got things done and uh, good leader in a sense, not a manager, a real leader. Okay, he was a real leader, he taught you how to get things done and you still remember him. Uh, probably he's not even around, right? And that's the impact that he's created you and assuming today is the last day of your career, 20, 30, 40 years of experience, you remember a very few people and for some specific reasons. Now, one thing I observed when all of you spoke, right, and it was voluntary, you chose to spoke, is that I'm surprised. None of you talked about things like my manager was from IIT Kharagpur. My manager was a gold medalist. That's why I liked him. My manager uh, was certified in four or five different degrees. My manager was the best project planner. He's talked about very simple things like he taught me values. He valued me as a person. He helped in my career. He, 
He invested time on me. He spent time with me. He spoke to me. When the going was tough, he had my back. When there was failure, he stood in front of me. These are the values that came out of your thank you speeches at the end of the career. In fact, we had people who remember the first boss probably 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Something very, very simple they did, keeping you in mind. You still remember today. Am I not wrong? Am I not right? Yeah? Right? Now, I have a question for you. Whose thank you speech will you feature in? What will be that one or two characteristics that you would want another person to thank you for when they retire or when they get out of your project or when they get out of your company, when they get out of your leadership? What are those one or two characteristics that you would want someone to thank you for? Right? Now, I like to probe a little deeper into this what we've discussed in the last five minutes. In all these leaders that you talked about, that you worked with, and who've left a profound impact in your career, what was the concern underlying their behavior? You see, they behaved in a certain way. They taught you, they, 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 they uh, helped you in your projects, they taught you values, leadership. What was the concern that was underlining their behavior? Right. <coughs> so their concern was, why did they do what they do? Why did they behave a certain way which other people probably did not? Because all of us have had an extreme. For all the good bosses you've had, you've had equally bad bosses like what he mentioned. So what was the concern underlining these leaders? Others. right? And if you see uh, miraculously in everything that all of you said, the concern was always the other person. Without an exception, without an exception, the concern was always the other person. And in this case, why was he a bad boss? The concern wasn't the other person. Unanimously, without an exception, the concern was always we. The concern was a purpose. The concern was us. And think of that one bad manager that all of us have had in our lives. And considering a few smiles and you're just buzzing. Where is the mic? I want to speak. So... But just think in your head, make it a thought experiment. Think of that one manager who you would hate to go back to work with. Right? One is enough, huh? <laughs> what was the concern underlining his or her behavior? Selfishness. Selfishness. Why? And how did it manifest as behaviors? What did you see him do because of that? Micromanagement, Micromanagement right? Breathing on your neck. They would take away your credit. They would take away your credit. Not following the and pass the blame to you. Not following the PM principles like you know, praise in public. Right, praise in public. So if you see there are basically two types of people and behaviors are a byproduct of the concern. The concern of one set of people whom all of you had in your thank you speeches, the concern was you. And there's another set of leaders where the concern is I. Now, the first set of people, when the concern is you, are derived out of a motive which says, I feel strong when I make others feel strong. The second set of people are derived from a motive where I feel strong when I make other people feel weak. There is no good or bad here, by the way, right? Just two types of people out of different concerns. Now, if you feel, if you have worked with the second set of people, these are people who would probably love to give you negative feedback in front of everybody. Internally, that gives them the power of a leader. The moment I scold you, give you negative feedback in front of a group, I feel like a leader. I derive my energy by making other people look weak. And some people love, derive energy by making other people look strong. It is said that the former uh, president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, when his army chief used to go and meet him in his uh, in his uh, in the Oval Office, he used to come out and uh, say that I felt like the President of the United States. And after he makes the decision, but I came out of the room and felt I felt like the President of the United States. In my own office, when I go 
into a, say a, a sales or a business development meeting along with my director to a client's office sometimes I come out thinking I made the sale I made a very very small probably a contribution to it probably the director did most of the contribution I feel so strong and out of my strength he derives strength and leadership getting your energy by making other people feel strong and getting your energy by making other people feel weak now why are concerns important why is it important to be aware and monitor where our concerns emanate from because out of concerns flows behavior you see none of these bosses you mentioned in your thank you speech get up one morning and say today i'm going to teach values to shivakumar no they just do that because their concern is him concern is others they derive strength by making other people feel strong and similarly not no boss gets up today morning and saying i'm going to give negative feedback in public they automatically do that because behaviors flow from a motive which is much deeper than just external behaviors and a lot of conferences and a lot of seminars books training programs concentrate on changing behaviors right so be more participative in leadership approach ask everybody's opinion before making a decision empower people it's great and you're going to go back next monday morning you're so motivated you're going to do that for an entire week but if your motive and concern is that of this person how long is the behavior shift going to last sorry half a day <laughs> why half a day you've learned you've gone to a training program learned the principles of leadership styles how to be a great leader um, you have to be participative you have to empower people you have to give them clarity but how long is it going to last he says half a day why because not really try to show it up right because his behavior is short lived because all of us revert to what our natural personality is and if your natural personality that flows from your concern is that of feeling strong by making other people feel weak in respect to what course you may go to harvard and attend a behavioral change program you're still going to revert to your natural personality unless you change your concern unless you view things your role as a leader is to empower make other people be better and if you change the concern you don't need to learn behaviors because behaviors automatically flow from your concern as the intro my introduction said i recently was at the world championship of public speaking where i ended up as number 2 in the world it's been a long journey for me in mastering the skill called public speaking so why nani have, have you tried your luck on stage any of you have you spoken in front of large audiences that yeah? you would know that it's not simple You see I participated in these competitions from way back from 2007 and 8 the last 8 9 years I've been competing at least 3 4 times in the same competition in 2008 I still remember I competed at the international speech contest it starts right from the club level uh, hosted by Toastmasters International there were four people right at the first level and these competitions go seven different levels and ends at the world championship which happens at Las Vegas uh, this year So the first 2008 the first level there were four speakers in my club and I had a topic on India in 2020 my vision right and <clears throat> three prizes are given one two three first runner up second runner up and winner and third prize my name wasn't there second prize my name wasn't there first prize my name wasn't there and now then India in 2020 what a wonderful topic I've given the best speech I can, and I lost. And the guy who won, I still remember his name was Patta Biram. His topic was traffic in Chennai and the lessons we can learn from it about life. Like here, there's a topic India in 2020. Here he's talking about traffic in Chennai and what can we learn about life from that? Like, are they crazy, the judges? And I lost that day. and i didn't even feel bad that i lost i felt bad that that day won with such a topic <laughs> and that's how most of us feel sad not because we lose but because the other guy won fast forward 8 years later i won the club area division district world championship semi finals and second place 
among 40,000 public speakers from the world. And, and the one question I kept, I was kept asked, being asked uh, all through after I came back from Las Vegas is, what is it about you that has changed from 2006, 7, 8 to now as a public speaker? Is it your body language? Is it your vocal variety? Is it your speech content? Is it your humor? Is it your stage spacing? What is it that has changed that has enabled you to make this transition of success? Which, which other people can learn from you. I thought about it a lot and initially I used to give jazzy answers like, you know, I have, I am now reflect more and stuff like that. Probably it's not the right answer. The, the reporter will like those answers, but it's not the right answer. And then I realized the answer is this. The answer is that the role that I see myself playing on stage is very different from then to now. In 2008, the role that I saw myself playing as a speaker is what I call chasing applause. I spoke on stage for claps. I loved it. Each time I got a clap, each time I won a trophy, each time they should give this best speaker ribbons in Toastmaster meetings, I used to feel so happy. I remember the first time I got this ribbon, went back home and I told my mother, I got the best speaker award today. She gave me a small holder, you know, the eyeglass holder, the GKB eyeglass holder. And she said, put your ribbons here, collect it, it should be full. And that was my motivation. The role that I saw myself play was that of chasing applause. Time went by and uh, slowly after a few years, it started getting boring. I already had 50, 60 ribbons. I needed something more to motivate me. And now the role that I saw myself play was creating impact. Which means if somebody tells me, Aditya, the beginning of your speech was awesome. Aditya, you ended in such an amazing way. You have great vocal variety. I, that used to be my motivation. Not the trophies, but the impact that I created with my speech. After a few years, that also stop giving me so much of motivation because I've heard that enough number of times and at the world championship this year after I came back to India I got an email from a lady uh, from France Europe you see I had given a speech called the scratch the speech was about how we make emotional scratches on people our dear and near ones and how we have the polish to mend that. I speak about that by taking a metaphor of a car, my car that gets scratched. And in the process of repairing that scratch, I end up scratching the hearts of many people. That's, that's my speech about. Right? And she writes a mail, which I come back to India in August 28th or something. And she writes a mail that goes like this, Aditya, I couldn't attend your speech live at Las Vegas, but I saw the video streaming of it. My brother and I, in her words, right? my brother and I haven't talked to each other for seven years because of some family issue, land issue. In fact, even during my father's funeral, we both came there but did not exchange words. After I heard your speech on scratch, I called him up and asked him to come home. He came home and for six hours, we talked nonstop. And at the end of which, we asked each other, why didn't we do this for seven years? And we don't know why we didn't. Thank you for telling us that a scratch stays only as long as I don't polish it. As I read that mail, I realized that the role that I saw myself playing was no more chasing applause. It was no more creating impact. It was changing lives. You see, that's the only change that has happened to me as a public speaker. Not my body language, not my vocal variety, not the content. Yes, that automatically changes as you mature. But the hardest thing to change is the role you see yourself playing. From chasing applause to creating impact, changing lives. The moment you see your role change, the way I prepare for a speech, the way I deliver the speech, everything automatically changes. But the moment we start learning or attending course about how to prepare a speech and not change what you think about yourself in that role, change is short-lived. 
and that's why we attend a lot of seminars like this get inspired get motivated go back to work how long does the motivation last a week two weeks and then you revert to what we are naturally used to now i ask you that question what is the role you see yourself playing as a leader is it that to complete a task is it to save cost is it to empower people to unleash their potential to help you is it something else the role you see yourself playing is going to ensure that you are able to harness people for project success take two doctors for example doctor a doctor b both of them are from same medical school both of them are from same background both of them are eye surgeons i go to one doctor and ask him what role do you see yourself playing and he tells me i am here to maximize the profits of my hospital right most doctors do that i am here to maximize profits of for my hospital and i go to doctor b and ask him what role do you see yourself play sir and he says i am here sorry to make more than him <laughs> are you a doctor <laughs> engineer <laughs> you and we are sure that more people go to doctors <laughs> Dr B says I am here to cure diseases to make sure the world is a better place. I'm not saying which doctor made the right choice or had the right role. But I'm saying does this have an impact on the way they behave with patients? Does it? Yes. Does it? Yes. Yeah. Can you list two three behaviors that you would see in Dr A? How will they treat the patients? same competency same language skill same everything same type of hospital same quality of service but just the role you see yourself play gives you a 300 zero advantage right what is the role that you see yourself play that flows into your behaviors that people in your team understand see observe and therefore that flows into results in terms of project delivery time cost effort and that's the power of seeing yourself to ensure that your projects are a success you see to close this what is the unique value add of an opening batsman in a cricket team what's the unique all batsmen value add is score runs what's the unique value add of an opening batsman make the ball old okay throwing double meanings here <laughs> Sorry, <coughs> take the shine out of the ball. Bowler does this more, you take that out more. That's that's the unique part. Yeah. Sorry. Put the by end shot scoring quick runs. You're saying. Yeah. Yeah. He sets the he sets the trend by batting my key and stuff. By by batting well and setting inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, so there are unique value adds. Right? Keep the pressure uh, to the opposition. Take the pressure off your team. Put the pressure to the opposition. Set the mood for the match. Yeah. 
keep confidence to the followers. Okay, let's pause it. Let's pause it. What's the unique value add of a middle order batsman? Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Carry the, continue the momentum. Maintain the consistency. Maintain the consistency. If there was no consistency, start on <laughs> like 17 for 4, right? You remember the late 90s India Australia matches? 17 for 4. Huh? <laughs> India versus? 175, 1983 World Cup, right? That's right. Maintain the consistency. He created the consistency. What is the what is the unique value out of a pinch hitter? Short time maximize. Why shouldn't that be the value add of an opening batsman? Because you don't mind short time maximize for any batsman, right? There's a risk of getting out, and what happens then? That's his value add. There's nobody else to substitute his value. Right? I want to put it back to you. What is your unique value add 10 years ago when probably you were uh, in your First five years, 10 years of your work experience. What was your unique value add to the organization? And what was your value add to the organization? Hard work is a input. That's your input. What is your value add to the organization? So value add of an opening batsman is not aggressiveness. It's about you know for the team, as you rightly said, uh, seeing off the new ball, etc. What was your value add as? Uh, it was about learning, mastering the skills, right? Complete the job assigned, okay? Delivery, execution, delivery. Somebody tells you what to do, you do it, okay? <coughs> Sorry? Like it? Creating software assets for the company, alright? Doing your programming well, huh? Take it and do it. Take it and do it, okay? Anything else? Okay. The first five years of your career, what was your value, unique value back to the company? I am not asking your value, what should have been your value? <laughs> Sorry? Do the job, right? Okay. What is your unique value add now as managers? Help them do it. Yeah. Make many do it. Yeah. Okay. And you can come to conferences like this. <laughs> I am busy, I will call you later. Okay. A team enabling team do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. What is what else is unique value? Man? Creating values, right? Yeah. Straightforward as far as possible. So therefore, what is your unique value add to the organization? As in this role, as a leader, as a manager, so mid, mid management in your firm. Sorry. What is multiplier? Like Amway guy. <laughs> Multiplying market. Come on. All of the chapu inside. So team development, capability development, etc. Right? Now my question to you is this. All of you seem to know your value add now. Then why all these yarn lectures? I pass. <laughs> That's the value add of a conference. Sharpening the sun. Sorry? Sharpening the sun. Sharpening the sun. The point is, if an opening batsman does not contribute for his unique value add, his batting skills are not useful. Right? And similarly, your unique value add now is others. What we started this lecture with. When you started your career, it was about you and rightfully so. And now your concern is about others. Your team and all of you, the five, six of you who answered now said team development, capability development, making others do the job. And in turn, who becomes successful? Everybody. Everybody, including you. Starting with you, right? Ending, Ending with you. But you're successful. Great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, enabling others to be successful. Flow to the team, right? And then finally, it enables you to be successful. Exactly. Making them successful and making you successful. In a family, a father has a unique value add, a child has a unique value add, 
in whatever role we play, we have a unique value add. And in the roles that you are playing now, as successful managers, none of you are here by chance, are you? All of you are here by years of experience, hard work, uh, skill, talent. But your unique value add now demands of you to harness people up. Because that's your primary job. Creating space for your primary job and ensuring that you are there keeping them in mind. You know what's that going to do? Many years later in a conference like this, there's going to be people like you sitting and somebody like me is going to ask them, deliver a thank you speech about the people who have impacted your career the most. And they're going to come on stage and say, I can think of only one name. And that is... Aditya. <laughs> and that is... Hopefully they don't say he's no more. <laughs> and that is... That is... Me. You. Right? Yes. Whose thank you speech are you going to be? Over to you. Thank you very much for the interactive session. You kept us all awake, making us, many of us think about our bosses. And your speech really energized all of us to think and analyze about the role each of us should play in our work and how that's going to add value to our teams and projects we handle. As a token of appreciation, we would like to present a memento to Mr. Aditya Maheshwaran. May I request Kaushik? to handle work in the